Hello, my name is Christine Welgus. And I'm Kevin Smith. And welcome to the short course on the dangers of nighttime and off-season tornadoes. Over the past century, the tornado death rate has declined, due in part to the improved forecasting technology and warning systems. However, researchers indicate that the decline in nighttime tornado death rates have not mirrored the rate shown for daytime tornadoes. From 1950 through 2005, research indicated that nighttime tornadoes were two and a half times more likely to kill people than daytime tornadoes. Research conducted by the National Weather Service Storm Prediction Center shows that a vast majority of nighttime killer tornadoes were embedded in a long line of thunderstorms, commonly known as squall lines. In a study from Walker Ashley at the Northern Illinois University, it was discovered that the highest concentration of nighttime killer tornadoes has been in the Deep South, which includes much of our region here in the heartland. The map above shows the percentage of nighttime tornadoes in each state. The states colored in blue and dark blue show the highest percentage of nighttime tornadoes across the United States. The study found that from 1985 through 2007, more than 60% of nighttime tornado fatalities occurred in mobile homes. This tends to coincide with the fact that the southeast United States has the highest percentage of mobile homes compared with any other region east of the Continental Divide. The NIU study found that seasonal factors also alter fatality rates. The cool and spring transition seasons from November to April have the highest nocturnal fatality rates despite having relatively few tornado events. Daylight hours are at a minimum during these months. Storms that occur outside of the main severe weather season, normally from April to June, are more likely to catch people off guard. Most of the tornadoes in our region occur in April and May. The geographic area that the National Weather Service Office in Paducah, Kentucky serves includes 58 counties, which cover portions of four different states, including southeast Missouri, western Kentucky, southern Illinois, and southwest Indiana. From 1996 through 2012, there have been a total of 52 deaths within this aforementioned area. 37 of these deaths occurred in mobile homes, or around 70%. 11 people died in permanent homes and 4 were in vehicles. Looking at the deaths by month, it may be surprising that some of our most active tornado months, namely April and May, contain the least amount of tornado deaths. Most of the deaths have occurred in the off-season, a time when many people do not believe tornadoes are possible. In the previous slide, Christine shared with us the stark facts associated with killer tornadoes in the Quad State region. Here's a picture that shows the locations of deaths associated with killer tornadoes highlighted in the blue rectangles, regardless of the time of day. Now, all the tornadoes that have occurred during the nighttime hours are highlighted in yellow. So it does not matter where you live in the Quad State region, nighttime tornadoes are possible anywhere. Here are some more statistics for you. Of the tornadoes that have occurred in the National Weather Service Paducah's coverage area, the tornadoes that have occurred at night account for 43 out of the 52 deaths between 1996 and 2012, which is 83%. 36 of those deaths occur between midnight and sunrise. These nighttime tornadoes account for one half of the 14 killer tornadoes that have occurred since 1996. Taking a look at the number of fatalities with respect to the strength of the tornado, there have been no deaths associated with three daytime EF4 tornadoes in our area. However, 10 people were killed from two nighttime EF4 tornadoes. The rest of the deaths occurred with weaker tornadoes of the EF3 or EF2 category. Here is a graph that proves that tornadoes can occur anytime in our region. This is a graph showing the number of tornadoes by month from 1995 through 2012. As you can see, we have documented tornadoes in every month of the year, so no month is immune to tornadoes. You can obviously see when tornadoes are more frequent, in the months of April and May. However, there appears to be other time periods of increased tornadic activity, 
such as September through November, and then again from January through March. Here is another illustration depicting the time tornadoes have occurred in our region for the period from 1996 through 2012. As you can clearly see, tornadoes can happen at any time of the day. However, the majority of tornadoes occur in the late afternoon through the early evening hours. A little more than 50% of all tornadoes have occurred in our area happen between 3 p.m. and 9 p.m. But there are plenty of tornadoes that have occurred during the nighttime hours. So why are nighttime tornadoes more dangerous than those that occur during the daytime? At night, the tornado will be more difficult to recognize. Therefore, spotters trained to spot and report tornadoes will have a more difficult time locating and identifying them. Some people who normally scope out the skies to confirm the fact that a tornado is occurring may not be able to witness the tornado before it is too late to take shelter. In addition, when tornadoes occur late at night or very early in the morning, that is a time when a vast majority of folks are sleeping. Therefore, they are not going to have a television or radio on to hear about weather updates and warnings. Sirens, which are designed to alert those who are outdoors, may not be of much help when you are indoors. Lastly, most people are going to be in dwellings that are more susceptible to damage, such as single-family homes or mobile homes, instead of being at work or at school in a stronger built building. We are going to show you a two-second video of a tornado near Morton's Gap, Kentucky on the night of April 26, 2011. This video was taken by Mr. Greg Rogers. Can you tell where the tornado is? Now, here is the same video in slow motion, highlighting the actual tornado. National Weather Service damage surveys revealed that this tornado was an EF0. Luckily, there was no loss of life and hardly any damage occurred with this short-lived tornado. One of the most important things you can do to reduce your chances of being a tornado statistic is simply being in the know. The problem with weather is that it's always changing and conditions can rapidly intensify during a severe weather event. Therefore, it's very important to stay up to date with the latest information. If you know thunderstorms are forecast, it's a good idea to find out how severe they may become. Before going to bed, check your favorite weather sources such as TV or the internet to find out what is expected. Also realize that the majority of tornadoes that occur in the off season can travel very quickly, upwards of 50 to 70 miles an hour. Tornadoes have a tendency to develop quickly so you don't have a lot of time to react. Therefore, even though a tornado warning is issued, the time you have to take shelter may be very short. The key is to know and practice your severe weather safety plan. What do you plan to do when the next tornado warning is issued for your area? A no weather radio is going to be your number one alert tool since it is designed to do the work for you. Whenever the National Weather Service issues a warning, the weather radio will turn on and alert you as long as you have the unit turned on and programmed correctly. This can be especially life-saving at night when most people are not actively monitoring the weather. Many people view the weather radio like a smoke alarm. It is that important. Remember to keep fresh batteries in your no weather radio, so it will still operate should the power go out. For more information on the no weather radio, including what transmitter to tune into, along with county codes, please visit the website listed on the bottom of this slide. If you don't own a no weather radio, consider purchasing one. You can utilize a smartphone, tablet, or laptop to alert you to any tornado warnings. There are apps that will allow you to do that. 
Plus, some phones are equipped with a special chip in which tornado warnings will automatically be sent to the phone. If you plan on using your phone, always make sure that the phone is charged up and that it's not in vibrate or in silent mode. It is always a good idea to have redundancy, such as having at least two ways of receiving warnings in case one fails. Although extremely rare, communications can fail at cell towers or even at no weather radio transmitter sites. This can occur due to wind, lightning, or even flooding taking out the tower itself or the phone lines. Remember, during a tornado, the best shelter is going to be in the interior room on the lowest floor of a sturdy building. If you're in a mobile home or an RV, leave if it's safe to do so. Seconds count. So one of the keys to surviving a tornado is acting quickly when a warning is issued. If you are driving at night and encounter a thunderstorm, keep vigilant for changing conditions. Very large hail is only associated with the most powerful thunderstorms, and these types of storms will have the best chances to produce tornadoes. So, if you experience hail that is golf ball size or larger, that should be a clue that you are not in a good spot. Sometimes, a tornado may be illuminated by lightning or city lights, but Another clue you may have that a tornado is occurring is blue and green flashes of light, mainly due to wind damaged power lines and transformers. You might even see debris blowing across the road. At this point, you need to safely pull over, get out of your vehicle, and head to safety in a sturdy building. Tornadoes can be frightening in their own right, but even more so at night or during the change of seasons. But knowledge is power. The key is to remain calm, be prepared, and have a safety plan in place when severe weather strikes. If you would like more information, we encourage you to contact us at the National Weather Service Office in Paducah, Kentucky. We hope that this training guide gave you the tools to keep you safe. Thanks for listening.